Today, we're talking about something that's gonna change the way you mix. Actually, it's gonna change the way everyone mixes. Let's talk about it. All right, so in this video, we're talking about something that was just announced literally today at AES conference. It's the Transform Engine from Fourier Audio. Now, just a quick disclaimer, uh, we are not involved with Fourier Audio in any way. They're not you know, sponsoring this or anything like that. I'm just very excited about this technology and I wanted to share it with you as soon as it was released. So let's jump into it. Now, as you can see right here, the whole point of this is you can run any VST3 plugin live. This is an absolute game changer for anyone in live sound. Um, you're probably familiar with plugins uh, and it's probably through Waves and their Super Rack application. So Super Rack is great. It can let you run all these Waves plugins live. Um, they've got their sound grid network that interfaces everything with different consoles. Now, there's one limitation and that is that it only works with Waves plugins. I know it's been a tension point for myself and a lot of other engineers. We've been kind of hoping that Waves would open up the platform, let other companies engineer plugins for the platform so they could run third-party plugins from within SuperRack, but that hasn't happened, unfortunately. And in steps Fourier Audio, just changing the game. So what they've done is essentially taken that model and opened it up so you can run anything you want live. So let's learn a little bit more about what this thing is and how it's gonna work. So scrolling down here, um, obviously their whole point is to run any plugin live. This is huge. VST3 is a very uh, robust and well-known plugin platform. And um, literally any plugin you can imagine uh, is pretty much available in VST3 format. So um, this is the very best studio grade processing on a robust platform that's specifically designed for the complexities of live production. So this isn't like some studio product that's been ported over to the live world. This is a dedicated platform for live production. Now, if you've worked with Waves for any amount of time, you've also probably had it crash. And uh, that's, you know, reliability is huge in the live sound industry and particularly in the church world. We can't just, you know, have something go down in the middle of service. So they're engineering this with reliability at its heart, or so they claim. We're going to see. We're going to put this to the test. So they're saying it's a rock solid plugin sandbox. Should a plugin crash, the rest of the system will not only be unaffected, but the transform engine will restart the plugin before you realize it failed. That's a pretty huge claim. That's definitely something that Waves cannot do. It has never done. Uh, a lot of times with Waves, if you're running a show and a plugin goes down, it will affect the rest of the system. It'll start lagging and potentially just completely crash. So if they can do what this claims to do and have it kind of processed in a more individual way so that if one channel goes down, it's just going to restart that and just not interrupt anything with the rest of the platform. That's incredible. Like that's right there is a game changer for reliability. Now this next part is super interesting. So you can see they've got the uh, Quantum 338 over here. The reason for that is because Fourier Audio was recently purchased by Digico and that's a big deal. So before there's an independent company developing these products and now they're owned by Digico, which I actually think is really great. Um, so I run a Digi Digico console a lot of times. I love Digico, love the platform, um, and I love their experience in the live sound world. I trust them that like if something has got, you know, kind of the Digico stamp of approval, it's going to work. It's going to be reliable. It's not going to break on me. It's going to be a platform that's supported well into the future. So I'm really excited that they've got the backing of a larger company like that. And it's not just some like random little company that's trying to, you know, change the world out here. Uh, so they're saying that uh, this is designed to be integrated directly into live audio workflows. It's going to deliver control of plugins directly under the fingers of engineers beginning with Digico, which obviously makes sense. Um, I will say I know there have been a couple beta testers uh, like Mark Carolyn from Muse, who's running an Avid S6L system. And uh, so obviously it's working with more than Digico. I, I believe uh, their intent here is to make it work with any platform, uh, but it does look like Digico might get some of this uh, controllability first. Now, the need for speed. This is obviously so important in the live sound world. So they're saying it's been tuned to deliver the lowest latency solution on the market for hosting VST3 plugins. Now, I am 
slightly skeptical on this. Uh, my, my only problem with this is the wording of this uh, solution on the market. Well, there really aren't any other solutions right now on the market. So yeah, it's easy to claim you've got the lowest latency on the market when you're the only one in the market. The next closest thing might be something like uh, Plugin Doctor from AudioStorm. And, uh, but that's a, that's like a natively host application. It doesn't have a server with it. Um, and it's not a very fast way to, to do that. Uh, so yeah, it makes sense that they'd be the fastest right now when there's no one competing with them. But I do believe they've got something uh, really good and really fast. So we'll kind of put that to the test and see how it does. Now, they're saying get going in seconds. Designed as a turnkey solution for plugin hosting. They're saying it can be easily controlled from a remote macOS client application. So if you're familiar with Waves, uh, SoundGrid, SuperRack, it's a little bit complicated. There's a lot of networking involved. There's like network switches you got to go through. Um, and there's, you know, a separate like server and a application on a computer. It has to be networked together and then connect that to your console. It's just, a, it's a bit much. Um, so with this, they're claiming that it's a little bit more all in one. Um, you just need a computer running a uh, Mac or I did confirm also Windows uh, client application. So that's how you're going to control everything. So it theoretically should be simpler. We'll see. And last but not least, it's built to be toured. This is a big one. Uh, it is designed and manufactured in the UK. Uh, that's where Digico is based and that's where Fourier Audio is based. So if it's got the Digico name on it and the backing of Digico, I trust is to be reliably built and that it will be touring great. Thoughts from beta testers. We've got Mark Carolyn from Muse, who is a guy that I really love his mixes. I uh, saw Muse back in high school for the first time. It really made me want to get into live sound because the mix was so awesome. Um, so he's been using this on Muse's Will of the People tour, which I actually uh, did go to see and it sounded amazing. So the fact that he's using it, uh, Tony Smith from Coldplay is using it. So that's really telling me a lot about how robust and reliable the system is going to be that uh, some dudes like this are already using it. Now let's dive into the front and the back panel. On the front panel, we have this really cool grill in the front of it. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, cross section of an airplane wing, a uh, very striking color here with kind of this neon greenish yellow. Um, you know, it, it's going to look cool in the rack for sure. Uh, maybe a little bit bright, but that's okay. Um, on the front, we can also see a couple USB ports and a little knob uh, encoder to run this menu. Uh, looks like this screen they're showing here uh, has got IP addresses for a primary, secondary uh, Dante network, as well as the IP address for controlling the unit. That's really nice to be able to jump into it and just uh, have that information right there in the front. Uh, looks like this is a back uh, indicator, so uh, presumably there's a lot more menu you can dive into there if you need it, but it's nice having those things right there on the front of the unit. Jumping over to the back, we have a few uh, interesting things to talk about. First off, we have uh, these locking EtherCon connectors for Dante. Like we talked about, Dante is just so ubiquitous in the live sound world right now. Um, almost every console you can imagine has got some way to get Dante in or out, whether it's just natively built in or you can get some sort of expansion card. So it's great to see them adopting uh, such a widespread platform rather than doing something um, kind of like Waves and making it run over SoundGrid that's their own proprietary networking protocol. Additionally, we've got two power supplies, which I love. Uh, it's always really nice to have a redundant power supply when you're dealing with live sound. It's got two power supply units in here. So if one fails or you know the electricity on one circuit goes down, you still got the other one and you should be good to go. We also have MIDI in, out, and through, which I'm sure we'll be able to uh, you know, configure this with other devices, maybe you know, tap tempo, who knows? I'm sure with MIDI, the uh, possibilities there are endless. Now, this is interesting. There's this USB bay. So it looks like we have thumb screws on the back of here that we can open up. I'm guessing this is for um, third-party authentication devices like an iLock or some other USB authenticator. So if you've got plugins that run those, um, you can just plug it in and this will uh, you know, keep it contained on the inside so you don't have like an iLock or like other USB dongle just like hanging out where it could get damaged. So that's a really nice thing they've thought of. Okay, tech specs. Uh, we're going to go deeper than this. We're going to jump into this other documentation with a little more going on here. So they've got the CPU uh, listed as the Intel Alder Lake i9. That is a more robust CPU than what Waves is running. So I think that's a really good sign that we're going to be able to do a lot of processing with this platform. Um, like we talked about, I've got two EtherCon running Dante. 
Uh, Dante, it's got uh, redundant network. It's got clock leader support. Um, and the minimum network latency is one millisecond. Speaking of latency, they claim down here on their data pipeline that latency goes down to 0.67 milliseconds. So presumably this uh, 0.67 plus the one millisecond of minimum network latency would be the minimum latency that you'd incur with this system. So that's really, really fast, imperceptibly fast. I think that should work great for nearly anything. Now, the issue here is what is the latency that's going to go beyond this because of more intense plugins? As you get into more robust processing, a lot of times the latency will uh, extend upwards, you know, way beyond, you know, 0.67 milliseconds. So it's definitely going to go up from here. We're just going to have to see what happens with that. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be some plugins that are just too intensive that we're not going to be able to use. That's okay. Still opens up a lot of stuff for us. And I mean, frankly, a lot of Waves plugins are pretty intense and their system still handles that. So I have no doubt that this will be able to do the same thing. Like we talked about, it's compatible with all Windows 10 VST3 plugins, which is pretty much every plugin uh, that can be installed and licensed offline. That's kind of a key thing. There are some plugins that have uh, like that need an internet connection to run. Uh, not not most of them by any means, but there are a few here and there I know of that are going to want to talk online to their server. So it's not going to be able to run those. Uh, that is definitely a limitation. Maybe they'll address that in the future. But for right now, it's something to be licensed and installed offline. Um, yeah, like we talked about it's a 2U chassis, so nice, small, compact. It's got a two-year warranty, so I like that a lot too. Now, jumping into some FAQs. When do we get to get this thing? Um, Q1 of 2024 is the expected release date. I think you can sign up to kind of learn more about it uh, when it gets released. Um, so that's pretty soon. You definitely, you know, reach out to your favorite local integrator and see uh, if they can get their hands on this and get in line for it. Then, um, let's see. Okay, so what do we need to get started with the Transform Engine? You'll need, obviously, the Transform Engine itself, one or more Dante-enabled devices to patch the engine into. So this is where it gets real interesting. Dante is so flexible in its routing that, like, you could be processing this at, like, different points in your Dante network, presumably, and have that process on like different devices, different things, like anything you can run into it and run out of it, that's where you'd be able to like have that Dante processing um, or processing from the transform engine. So you, the options here are really limitless. It's not just like, oh, I can, you can only run it on this one console. Like, no, like theoretically, anything you can run Dante in, you could process with this. So that's really, really cool. And then lastly, you'll need a computer to run the control software, uh, Windows 10 upwards, or Mac OS 11 and up. Now, here we go. How many plugins can I run? Uh, they answered that question with a question, how long is a piece of string? Who knows? No two plugins are alike. Um, so it's really going to depend on the DSP load that's presented by each plugin. Uh, they don't limit the number of plugins you can run, which is awesome. It's not like some intrinsic limit. They're just opening it up. You can do what you want to. When you run out of power, you're running out of power. But you can go up until that point. Um, I am very excited to see their benchmarks as they come through. Uh, hopefully that'll give us some more information about what we can really expect to run. Um, but they're they're saying they're supporting 64 channels at 96K, uh, which is great. Saying that that means they're expecting you can run, you know, a very robust and full show with this, uh, with 64 channels. So that, you know, certainly makes it seem like they're going to be in a really good spot for running a lot of processing with this. All right. So that's our overview of the new Transform engine from Fourier Audio. If you like this video, you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead, leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel really helps us out. But now I want to hear from you. Are you excited about this transform engine? Uh, or are you just perfectly content with waves? You don't need any of this stuff. Um, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to talk about it. I'd love to hear what you think and whether you think you'd buy this for your church.